What's up, everybody? This is Sea Launch Sports. This is Kennedy Curley. We got Hayden Clean Camera over here in the Lakers jersey. Trash. A shirt. But, uh, yeah, thank you for joining in. Uh, today we have some topics. I'm really excited to be on today, honestly. Uh, mm -hmm. we got some topics here about the uh, the finals. we got the Raptors uh, and the Warriors coming in uh, tomorrow. <sighs> uh, also, we're going to mention a little bit about Giannis and the Houston rumors about possible trades. So, uh, to go ahead and start things off, we can go ahead and do our predictions. And I'm really excited about this, actually, because... I, personally, I think this is a, a lot better of a series than people might be expecting. Mostly because the uh, mostly because Kevin Durant is out, and mm -hmm. if Kevin Durant was there, I think that that would be a little too um, Much. overwhelming for the the Raptors' defense. They were able to get away with guarding Giannis, and they did a really good job with that. But Kevin Durant, that's going to occupy. Kawhi Leonard, and then I'm not sure who would yep. draw Steph Curry and, and Clay, uh, Clay Thompson. But without Kevin Durant, and I'm assuming he'll be out for a while because he hasn't started practicing. Yeah. I'm, if he's if he's out for the majority of the series, Hayden, I'm picking the, Ra the Raptors in seven. I am. Uh, and the reason why, I, I started thinking the finals, this is only if he's out the majority of the series. The finals are where crazy things happen, all right? Crazy matchups happen. Coaches pull out, you know, all the all the strategies. Kawhi Leonard, for all we know, he could get matched up on Steph Curry. And we're talking about Kawhi Leonard, who's been unstoppable this series. And we're talking about Kawhi Leonard, who's one of the best all-around defenders that we've seen in NBA history. I'm not saying he is the best, but he's up there. He can he he we we've seen him guard LeBron, and he didn't shut him down, but he really contained him, and that's why he ended up winning the Finals MVP. And we've seen him just shut out Giannis. Those are two people who are bigger than him. But he also has the physical tools to be able to, to run down guys like Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. And he has the length to be able to cause problems for them. So I don't know how they'll put Kawhi on, like, who they'll put him on. Maybe they'll put him on Klay Thompson. Maybe they'll put him on Steph. Maybe they'll put him on Draymond. I don't know. But the defensive plan that they had on Giannis was great. And I think that they could do something similarly with Steph. And maybe try to contain him a little bit and make Clay Thompson or Draymond Green try to beat you with the rest of the team. Mm. And I think that that, mm. without Kevin Durant, I, I'm going with being the, uh, being the guy who takes his team over the edge. And so, once again, if, I'll, I'll say this. If Kevin Durant comes back in, in the first two, three games, I'll go Warriors and six. Writing oh. that that uh that what do you call it assumption. So I want to hear your thoughts. First of all, I'm gonna punch a hole in your whole Kawhi guarding Steph uh, argument. It could happen. It could happen. If, if the Raptors do that for long periods of time. And I was Steve Kerr. I would run Kawhi Leonard through a screen on every single possession. I would wear him out. Because offensively, no one else on that team is going to, you know, Kyle Lowry had a good series against the Bucks. Uh -huh. Good for good for playoff uh, Kyle Lowry. Right. Put up, he put up decent numbers. Um, no one else on that team should scare the Warriors offensively. Um, yeah. And we've seen, we've seen, especially early on in the Milwaukee series, Kawhi looked exhausted. I guess going home to Toronto gave them, you know, the energy boost. Mm -hmm. But, you know... And really, honestly, even for most of game three, you know, they were down like 15 at one point. Mm -hmm. He just looked exhausted. And then all of a sudden, you know, he, they pulled the, the bag of tricks out. But um, even if Kevin Durant misses most of the series, I think Stephen Curry 
is rolling right now. Um, I don't think the Raptors have enough firepower or weapons. Um, unless you get all of their role players playing like they did for the last three games of the Milwaukee series, mm-hmm. then, you know, it could go seven. But other than that, I just – the Warriors are too good, unfortunately. As, as painful as that is for me to say. You, um, you need to believe. You just need to believe, Hayden. Look, so I agree with you. I think that um, – why did look like he was exhausted toward the end of the series, but I think that having this four day break, uh, I think that will be a good thing for him. Uh, he looked like he was relatively you know, at times kind of limping even a little bit. And so I think that having more than a two day break will be big for him. Um, I also think that the Raptors have enough shooters and I think that they have enough size on the inside to where they can at least manage to get points in the paint. Mm-hmm. I don't think that I would say this. I think that I guess I've already said it, but but the I think the reason the Warriors look so good against the Blazers was because they were playing a JV version of themselves. Mm-hmm. And so if you put someone on the Warriors or on the Blazers I should say who was a third wing and you made Steph and Clay have to outplay someone like Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, and then a third, you know, star small forward or something like that. I think that that could have been a a way different series, but I don't think that the Blazers ever had a chance because the position power and the way that teams play are so similar. But the way that the Raptors play and their strengths are different than the the Raptors' weaknesses, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So they might not have strong point guards or shooting guards. They don't have weak point guards or shooting guards, but they're not as strong as Steph and Clay. But what they don't have there, they make up with Kawhi. They have Siakam. They have low guys like, uh, you know, Marc Gasol and, and Serge Ibaka. And a lot of those guys can shoot. And so I think that if you get guys like Danny Green, who I expect to have a relatively good shooting uh, series, he didn't have a good sh- uh, series last, last time, but he's an experienced veteran. Mm-hmm. I think that if you get him the touches and you get him going in these games, I think that I think the Raptors will be fine along with him and Kyle Lowry, uh, Mark Gasol. He just needs to hit some threes. But overall, I do think that the Raptors have a, a good shot at this without KD. With KD, I think that they. I don't think any team in the league would beat the Warriors with KD in a seven-game series. I just think that that's too much to ask a lot of teams. That maybe maybe the Bucks had a chance mm-hmm. because I'm not sure that anyone on that roster was able to physically match with Giannis the way that uh, Kawhi was. But I just don't think that – I don't think that with just Steph and and, uh, Clay Thompson that they're too overpowered. And I actually think the Raptors will go ahead and take this one. But, well, speaking of the the Raptors and where they are, we're actually going to go ahead and do a little bit of – Yes. analysis on opponent an opponent they that they just played um so Giannis recently said that he wants your to bring all the god of the paint. what'd you say i said your greek god of the paint my greek god of the paint which i still hold to but we can get to, uh, to that in a, a second Giannis recently brought up the point that he wants to see all the free agents that they have come back he wants to see brogdon chris middleton brooke lopez all those guys come back because he thinks that they have a shot at winning a championship next season. Now, that brings up the question to me. Do you think that Giannis was overrated this year? Or maybe not this series, but just this whole season? Do you think that the supporting cast was overrated? A little bit of both, a little bit of neither? What are your thoughts on that? Giannis? needs to develop develop a skill set outside of just being long. Okay. Um, your Greek god of the paint is the god of the paint because he can get to the basket from the three-point line with one step. Yes. So, you know, he, his skill set isn't really, you know, 
because after the first two games, all they did, they put five guys in the paint and they weren't going to let Giannis beat him, beat Mm -hmm. them. So, you know, and in order to, to beat that, you have to either have your role players play out of their mind for an entire series, which usually that's why they're role players. Because, you know, one one steps up in one game, another steps up in another game. But to expect them all to, to shoot well enough to overcome your poor shooting performances is just not realistic. You know, you're the guy. You're probably the MVP. I'm still voting for him as MVP. I think he was fantastic in the regular season, for sure. And the playoffs in general. I, I, I think people are giving him a lot of stick because, you know, he didn't perform well or he didn't shoot well. But you also have to realize who's guarding him. Like you said, I mean, this is Kawhi Leonard we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Probably the best defender in the NBA today. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's about Giannis continuing to develop a skill set. And, you know, that was kind of, a, you know, Boone and Holzer put them in a position this year where, you know, his weaknesses weren't really exposed. But when Jason Kidd was head coach, that was kind of a big thing almost. You know, when is Giannis going to take the next step? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just about him taking the next step and, you know, developing some sort of a floater or a a pull-up or something. Um, If he wants to only play inside, then his post work – needs to improve in terms of his skill set there. Obviously, you know, he can still beat a lot of teams just by being long, but there are certain defenders in the NBA that aren't just going to let you do that to them or certain teams, for example. Um, So I think it's just about continuing to develop his next skill set or his next skill. Okay. So I, I agree with you. I think that Giannis bears a lot of the blame for that series. Um, I don't think that he's overrated. And I don't think you said that. Yeah, no. Um, I, I don't think any of them are overrated, honestly. I think that really everyone just underperformed. And uh, my biggest problem with Giannis wasn't necessarily even just that he couldn't shoot or that he struggled getting to the paint. My biggest problem with him was actually his free throw percentage. Yeah, dropped tremendously, and it was. I looked at the numbers for the last four games, all four games that they lost, and he shot seventeen for thirty six. That's yeah, forty seven percent. That's terrible. that's ridiculous. That's horrible. Yeah. And so I think that's honestly, if you that's if you a series, it, it, it's a, the whole I mean, series. Like we would be talking about the Bucks and the the Warriors yeah, right now if he literally, just hit literally you know, even two fifths of the yeah. free throws that he missed. Yeah. Um, and so I I think. Yeah, I mean, you look at games three through six. If Giannis made half of the free throws that he missed in one of those games, it's a they're up three zero, you know, in game three, or they're up three one in game four. You know, it that was huge to me. He even airballed a few of them. Yeah. But um, with that being said, he did get kind of manhandled by Kawhi Leonard uh, in the defense of the Raptors, and I I don't necessarily think that that says a lot about. Kawhi as much as it says that or sorry uh, uh, Giannis as much as it says stuff about Kawhi Kawhi's defense is phenomenal we knew that and I, I figured going into the series that Kawhi would be the toughest matchup that Giannis would ever have to face he's mm-hmm. he's the kryptonite and so to see him underperform like that I expected him to underperform a little bit but that much I wasn't expecting all that much but I will say for as much blame as I give him, I don't think that people are highlighting how bad the rest of the team was either. I think that they could have won even despite Giannis's low percentages relative to the season. I agree. I'm looking at Brooke Lopez's three point percentage. It was thirty one percent. It wasn't after, anything crazy. after game one, it was it was he wasn't my good. X factor, my X factor was yeah. not the X factor. Um 
you know, you've got George Hill. Actually, George Hill played pretty well. Uh, Eric Bledsoe was horrible. Yeah. He shot 29.4% the whole series just for field goals, 19% from, from three. I mean, that's one of your best players. No, actually, 17%. Miritich shot 19%. Yeah. Ilya Silva shot 28%. So, I mean, I'm seeing the, the team percentage was 31%. And, not, and not, you know, a lot of these were good looks. Because yeah, like they, I said, they were missing literally, open shots. Literally, the Raptors literally just put everyone in the paint and were not going to let Giannis get layups. Yeah, they were they were just missing open shots. And so, yeah. for me, that that's my – that's where I was confused was that series I was expecting, and you and I both said it, what Giannis lacked as a shooter, the rest of the team has made up for the entire yeah. season yeah. until this series. And so, for me, I'm I'm sitting here and I'm thinking – they really should have won this series. I given agree. what they've been doing the entire season. They've been doing what they – Me and you even had doing. this conversation, um, you know, I think going into game six. You know, even at that point, we, we still picked the Bucks to win in seven because, yeah. you know, you don't expect such a, a big drop-off like that on, like, wide-open jump shots. Right. Like, they're so- all – they're all decent to good shooters. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I agree with you, though. I do think that Giannis needs to develop a jump shot. I actually think his skill overall is is actually pretty good. This is a guy who plays great defense and on offense. He can play positions one through five. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't obviously want him playing positions one through three all the time, but he can do it. And he plays on the wing, but he can also play down low. He shot 58% from the court. And I'm actually with you. I I was saying Harden for a while, uh, but I do think that Giannis probably deserves the MVP. Just looking at his overall body of work as an offensive player, as a passer, as a rebounder, and then as a defender, we're talking about someone who could win Defensive Player of the Year. I I agree. Personally, I don't think he's overrated. I think that it's premature to say that he's overrated. Oh, completely, completely. And and I think that he, um, I think that the way that he's gotten better each season, I wouldn't be surprised if he had a great jump shot in the next two or three years. And he's, so he's 25. He's 24 right now. And 24. so he's, he's I mean, got literally. time. He's not, he's just entering his prime. Giannis will be fine. Yeah. I think he's even fine right now, but, but to say he's overrated as I'm hearing some people say, and, and I'm seeing some people, you know, on ESPN, I'm seeing some people comment on a uh, Facebook posts and Twitter posts. That's really I think good. that's a little ridiculous. Yeah. Um, he true. just has a kryptonite and that was, that was Kawhi. And so I mean, like, that, to be fair, fair, like you said, to be fair, that's a lot of people's kryptonite. Yeah. I mean, you know. Kawhi could honestly probably guard Kevin Durant pretty well. Oh, I agree. I agree. LeBron actually struggles against Kawhi. Oh, yeah. 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 It, yep. yeah. Everyone struggles against Kawhi. I agree. I agree. Well, I'm glad we could agree, Hayden. Uh, that was that was good, but um, – on to the next one. So Houston today, they were uh, reported to by Wojnarowski, Adrian Wojnarowski, mm. to be looking aggressively to try to trade a lot of their players. Any of their players are reportedly up for trade. Mm-hmm. And while it's hard to imagine James Harden being one of those guys, I think that's an interesting thought. But my question to you is, does Houston have a reasonable shot to contend from here on out? Not with James Harden on the team, they don't. Interesting. Not with James Harden on the team, they don't. No. Um, you know, we've had this conversation many times in different routes or different routes. Um, to me, I don't think James Harden's style translates well to the playoffs at all. Um. To be fair, he his supporting cast disappeared against the Warriors. I mean, he had no other help whatsoever. And not really, you know. I think I was one of the few that actually gave the Rockets a chance because I honestly expected it to be a series like last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, actually, reportedly, James Harden is, like, the only one that's kind of, you know, not untouchable, but close to being untouchable. Yeah, uh, they're going to have to be really blown away. Yeah, yeah. 
So, you know, with him on the team, unless, you know, someone is crazy enough to to give up, you know, a star for Chris Paul, who, you know, finally seems like um, the age thing has caught up to him. Uh-huh. Um, Clint Capella could be a, a decent trade piece, but I don't know if he'd really get anyone – back that would be better than him for what he does right um so it's just hard for me to really you know see them gaining or really going anywhere from where they are right now yeah it's it's hard i'll say it's hard for me to see it too so chris paul is the only he's the person i think that would be the most ideal to trade Uh he's about to get paid 38 million dollars He's by the time his contract is up, he's going to be 36, and he's going to be paid somewhere in the $40 range. I think it's 44 million. No one wants to take that on. The only team that would be dumb enough to do that is the Lakers, and that's because LeBron could have yeah. some say in that. Yeah. But overall, I don't think that there's really a way that you can get rid of Chris Paul's contract, and I don't think that you're going to want to get rid of James Harden's. I think the best, most realistic option of trading somebody would be either Eric Gordon or Clint Capella. Mm-hmm. And I think the smartest thing to do would probably be trading probably Clint Capella. And because, I mean, Clint, he's actually paid relatively well for someone at his position. Sure. Yeah. For what he does, I think that the 13, 14 million that he's getting paid right now, that's not outlandish. And at the same time, I do think that he's, as, he's more replaceable. I think you need elite shooters on that team. Maybe sure. bring someone in who could play yeah. defense. Um, and then maybe go after someone in the free agency like Willie Colley Stein or someone like that. Um, I'm just naming random names out there, but but someone who could come in and take over uh, Clint Capella's you know role. I don't think it would be that hard to find somebody personally, but overall, I just don't see with Chris Paul's contract. I have a hard time believing that any that they're really going to be able to get anybody. And I was. I was really confused. I wasn't confused necessarily. I understood what they were going for when they signed him to that contract. They obviously they were trying to contend now. Mm-hmm. Long term, that's just a mess, and I think that they knew yeah. that. That's they probably knew that they were going to have this type of conversation um, with team about Chris Paul. And so, yep. to me, no, I don't think Houston's going to contend anytime soon, unless, and I don't think this will happen. So I'm not changing my answer, but there has been some suggestion by some people that you trade LeBron for James Harden. I don't mm-hmm. think the Lakers would do that. But if that happened, maybe we'd have a different conversation. Mm-hmm. It's not happening. The Rockets are going to be about what they are now. A really good team. The Warriors are probably going to take them. And even if they do get to the finals, I think that the Bucks would be better than them. I think that the Knicks with Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving would be better than them. I think right. that the Raptors, if they keep Kawhi, are better than them. It's, right. They're not going to be a contender. I agree. That's my final answer. 100%. One hundred percent. I uh, did. We just agree on all three. No, I said the Raptors were going to win in uh, oh, seven. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. All right. Good. I was going to say. No, if if we agreed on all three, I think that there would be something wrong, and we wouldn't. Yeah. We wouldn't post this. Yeah. We couldn't. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I just. I'm not sold on their ability to to advance to win 16 games, essentially. Um, you know, I think if they get the right matchups, obviously like Utah, you know. Right. You know, they beat them in five games. Um, but other than that, you know, I just don't. I don't see them really um, – I just can't see – the way that they play now and as Chris Paul continues to decline, um, I don't see them becoming contenders. Yeah. I, I mean, to add on to a little bit of what you're saying, I think that the roster the way it is now, it's too old. They, uh-huh. they don't have any young players. James Harden is 29. Uh, Clint Capella is going to be 24 next season, so he's their youngest. But he's not an offensive playmaker. He's 
he's a pick and roll guy. He's a rebounder. He's a defender, and he runs the court really well. But Chris Paul is 34. PJ Tucker is 34. Eric Gordon, I'm not. I think he's in his 30s. They need to get youth, and I think they've known that for a while. But um, Eric Gordon's 31. They have good players, but they're just. I think that they're aging at an unfortunate time, and mm-hmm. if they were to trade, they'd probably be able to get some younger pieces, but I don't think that they would be able to get the same value necessarily I back. Agree. I uh, agree. Maybe Eric Gordon would be able to get something because teams covet shooters, but mm-hmm. that's really that's really about it. Mm-hmm. So. I agree. Yeah. That's it. Well, yep, that's, that's all we have today. So uh, all our listeners, thank you for listening this long. Yes. Um, go ahead and give us a follow on our Twitter page, at Lunch Sports. And uh, DM us any suggestions, anything that you like, uh, or if you just want to talk about basketball, feel free to do that. But we'll be doing these hopefully in the next few days. So stay tuned, and we will see you all later.